I really started working on the issue of American Indian mascots back in the 1990s. But as a result of my teaching over the years, people have given me a lot of stuff that they don't really want to have anymore once they hear a lecture or they hear me talk about it. So the things that I have are really things that people have given me over the years and that I use in my classes to teach how Native people are depicted in popular culture. Most of them are from the 20th century somewhere. And some of them are things like films. There's an Abbott and Costello film box that says, no Indians, please, on it. And that's that whole concept of, we don't want to be around any Native people. And that goes along with a whole history of trying to eliminate Native Americans, both from a governmental point of view and from a popular culture point of view. And then you get into a couple of things that I have that are just mean and represent the sensibility people had in the 1950s, for example, that Native people were so far gone that it was completely fun to make fun of them, like the concept of scalping. And so there's a postcard I have, and it's got a caricature of some Natives who are scalping a non-Native. I also have a, a few pieces of what we might call glassware that depict Native people in one way or the other. And then for some reason, I have three sets of salt and pepper shakers that depict native people often characteristically almost as children. So most of the things that I have are related to either the plains stereotype, which is the most common thing, the TP, the war bonnet. And then from there it goes caricaturistic playing on the tropes of native Americans that have appeared throughout popular culture since the arrival of the Europeans. So typically that goes along with this concept of the noble savage that we know well in Native studies, which is the depiction of the Native person as being somehow pure and connected to nature and physically fit and all of that. But the savage part is they are bereft of true culture. They don't have Christianity as a religion. And so these things are still out there and they're happening on a pretty regular basis. Sometimes it's tricky to talk about pop culture items because not everyone has a negative intent when they create something. They're really trying to create something kitschy. Dr. Cornell Peewee talks a lot about this with regard to disconscious racism. DYS, bad conscious knowledge, it's bad knowledge. It's just passed down from one generation to the next. But what it really leads into is the fetishization of Native people. And that goes to all other racial groups that are non-Anglo in North America. It's essentially pulling out little elements of a culture to create something that the, the owner of the item finds cute or endearing or mystical, although it doesn't really have anything to do with the real people. And we always say the thing about stereotyping that makes it a negative is it limits the perspective of those people and essentially dehumanizes them. And so there are people like the Tycar folks in Tulsa, Tulsa Indian Coalition Against Racism. Now they've done a really good job of keeping pressure on someone like Tulsa Union to keep thinking about this. And so I think the real future of it is younger people who are energetic and have a strong sensibility about it to push for not only elimination of what's there, but when things pop up, having the voice to be able to highlight the ignorance that's gone along with creating that image and using it for commercial purposes. What we hope will happen in the future is that people will appreciate a corn husk doll or a tear dress or a really complicated double wall basket with a lid on it. It's a, a constant balancing act of recognizing the positive as well as recognizing the negative and seeing how you can convert that negative into a positive. And we've seen some progress this past summer. The Washington Pro Football Team, Tulsa Union starting to discuss these things. So things are starting to evolve, but we still have a long way to go.